So guys, there has been accusations online that Sergio Perez, even though we know he is the second driver at Red Bull Racing, there's been accusations that Perez has not been treated exactly as fair as maybe he should be as a number two driver at Red Bull Racing. So what we're going to look at is the accusations um, to do with this and also just look at has he been treated unfairly and um, kind of debunk, I guess you could say, the accusations when it comes to this topic. So let's get into the accusations first. I have seen mostly online and that is common with how um, things work, say with number two drivers at certain teams. Here are the accusations. So not having the same parts as Verstappen and not running the same floor as Verstappen. We have heard a lot of this on, I think, Twitter in the last couple of months or so that Perez hasn't had the same parts as Max Verstappen. Now, in a moment, I will get into uh, why that is and a pretty reasonable explanation as to why uh, Sergio Perez has not um, or has, yeah, has not been running the same parts, but it is for a good reason rather than a nefarious reason or a bad reason. And also the accusations not being allowed uh, always being allowed to race Max. There's been a couple times this season where Sergio has been told to not race Max or let Max through, which has caused some controversy. Uh, so we'll get into that as well. And also, um, you know, being given strategies, um, it's supposed to say not as good as the number one driver. But yeah, we'll also look at whether there's any strategies um, in terms of the races he's had this season where he's, his strategy has been compromised by having to support his teammate in some way, shape, or form. Now, let's start with the the car parts and the running the same floor stuff. Let's start with that first. Now, in the early part of the season, here you can see this is where Sergio Perez won the Monaco Grand Prix brilliantly. At the start of the season, Perez was a lot closer to uh, Max Verstappen uh, than he is now. The reason that is is because the car just wasn't suiting Max as much as uh, it was, say, at this point of the season and was suiting Checo quite a bit more than Verstappen. Now, the reason uh, that is, is um, and the reason it's changed in terms of Perez falling away as he has to the point where he is now uh, losing a, a lot more pace to Verstappen than he was in the first, say, six or seven races. This was explained by the Red Bull technical director. Uh, I, I know his first name is Pierre, but I cannot pronounce his final name because it's just too difficult for me. But let's get into his comments in regards to the um, the way the car has evolved in terms of design, but also the um, you know the setup of the car and stuff like that. So this is what he had to say. Um, in terms of the um, the car at times, you know, suiting one driver over the other. He said, quote, I think it's multiple factors, but the main factor is clearly the car balance. The confidence with the car compared to the beginning of the year when the car was a bit more balanced for him and a bit less for Max. That's why Sergio Perez was performing a bit better um, uh, at that part of the season than he is now. And then he says, the development we put on the car uh, during the season seemed to have moved away from what was ideal for Perez, he suggested. And then he went on to say, uh, quote, trying to find the right setup for him is quite difficult to get him as confident as he could be to beat uh, or fight with Max. So basically, the reason that, um, the reason that Perez has become um say less confident or just slower or a big reason is because as they've developed the car it's become more suiting for max and it has also um become i think harder for sergio to set up than it was at the start of the season and as development of the car has evolved it has like I said, it's become just more difficult to find the absolute right setup. Well, at the start of the season, the Red Bull car didn't really change maybe as much as it has in the last, say, two or three months compared to the first month or two of the Formula One season. Now, Red Bull 
They did begin the year with a heavy car, as we know. They were, I think, 15 kilograms overweight at one point. I think that was at the very start of the season. Um, and ha as the car has been lightened, it has affected the load points and influenced setup decisions. That's what Red Bull have said in regards to why maybe the car is, you know, different in its um, in the way you need to set the car up compared to the start of the season. And this is also uh, what uh, Pierre had to say, the technical director of Red Bull had to say on this topic. He said, quote, the weight is an aspect for sure, but it's part of the setup of the car. At the beginning of the season, we didn't have the possibility to move the weight. I think it's everything together. And after you find your performance uh, somewhere and it's a little bit more tricky to set up the car, it went in favor of Max, uh, he added. And then he said, quote, I think he's able to drive any car. Now we have to find a way to give a car for Sergio to be performing and to compete. But it's a together aspect. So essentially what he is saying is, I mean, the car at the start of the season wasn't suiting as Max as much as it is now. But Max is such a great driver that he can work around that a lot more than Sergio can. When Sergio, and this is quite similar actually to Jensen Button, who was like this a bit when he was in F1, I think in that the setup is so more, much more important to their performance and their confidence um, than it is for a driver like Max Verstappen, who can seemingly drive around those issues a lot more, but also uh, they have that uh, just self-belief that they are the absolute best and, you know, that they are um, gods, essentially, in their own minds, that they don't get too down on themselves when it comes to having the confidence in the car because they you know they're able to just or the driver like max is able to just drive around it when for checo again his confidence is a lot more dependent on um on what you call it a lot more dependent on the actual setup of the car and this red bull car that we'll go on to now with this clip of max driving it in pre-season um hasn't and the reason it's not suited uh, Max Verstappen, as I'm going to say now, um, as, say, last year's cars, the reason, and this is what Helmut Marko had to say, I will provide a link in the description, I think, uh, for this exact quote. His aggressive style hasn't suited these 2022 cars as much because they have less downforce and you can't push the cars, maybe, especially on a qualifying lap, as hard as you could previously. So Max... These cars haven't been as suited for him anyway, never mind how the car was at the start of the season. So, you know, Max has had his own issues and the car has just, you know, in, as it's got better, got more downforce, got lighter especially, it's become um, just more suited for Max's style than Checo's, rather than, you know, the allegation, I guess you could say, that... Um, that, you know, they were deliberately developing the car away from Perez when, I mean, if they did do that, I don't think it would be actually still, like, massively bad. I mean, it would still be bad to a certain extent, but I don't think it's quite as, you know, nefarious in the way they've developed this car um, as people would think. I think they, um, I think they have been just trying to improve the car and it's just suited max more so than checo another thing to quickly um let you guys know of and i will post a link to this bit of um information in the description of this video as well um of the video that is you know coming out um what do you call it so red bull are now running two different floors which you may have heard of I think from the Belgian Grand Prix, and that was also a bit of a, I guess you could say, conspiracy theory from, I think, just before the summer break. Max is running a floor from earlier in the season that he has confidence in. Checo is running a floor design that hasn't delivered the step forward that Red Bull hoped. Basically, what happened was uh, a new floor was trialed from Red Bull in Austria and France, but it didn't give the performance they were hoping for. So because, because of the cost cap, limitations because they can't just build and bring a new floor because of those limitations they are running two different floors to i think pretty much collect data and work out how they can um, improve on 
um, or you'll find a way to just get around the issues with the floor and just get a full analysis of how the floor is performing. So again, it is for good reason why they are both running two different floor designs. It's not, again, for nefarious reasons. There is a an absolutely fine reason when it comes to that. So in terms of the car parts and the... Um, and what do you call it? The you know different floor designs and stuff like that. I don't think there's anything wrong being done here. I think it makes absolute sense to be honest. The car in reflection, like I said, the car um, as it's got better, you know, more downforce and lighter. It's suited Max's style more, and the setup of the car isn't as important to Max as it is for Checo, and that's resulted in it suiting Max a bit more. We have to remember as well, Max was ahead of Perez in the championship anyway after, I think, the eighth race of the season in Baku, which was basically the end of Perez's very good start to the season. Um, and also, yeah, they're running, you know, two different floor designs, again, for good reason, because they want they can't bring a new floor to replace the one that hasn't worked as well. Um, so they're running two different floors because that's the best really they can do uh, there at Red Bull. But now, let's get into the, um, I guess, uh, what would you call it? The accusation that Sergio, in a couple races this season, and this is towards the earlier part of the season, that he hasn't been allowed necessarily to race uh, Max Verstappen um, as much as he would have wanted to, say, for uh, victory of the Spanish Grand Prix. and arguably the Azerbaijan Grand Prix as well. Well, let's get into whether um, Checo and his fans, I guess you could say, have a fair criticism here. And on reflection, I don't think they do. Uh, so let's quickly get into the data. So in Spain, obviously, um, it was, I think, after Carlos Sainz had his spin... At turn four, it was Leclerc leading the race from Verstappen second, Russell third, Perez fourth, and then um, Verstappen had his spin, came up behind Perez, and then they decided Red Bull to pit Max before Perez and put him on a more aggressive strategy. And initially, the plan was for Max to be on a three stop and Perez to be on a two stop. Uh, in the end, Perez did go on to a three stop because his tyres were falling away quite bad compared to Verstappen, but in that second stint of the race, when I think Max overtook Perez the first time um, in quite easy circumstances, on average in that stint, Max was one and a half seconds a lap quicker than Perez. So there was no reason to hold up Verstappen and hold up yourself as a team when one driver is that much quicker on average compared to the other driver. And then when Verstappen passed Perez for the second time, which I think is when Perez let him through at turn four, you can see in that third stint, Max is 1.3 seconds quicker pretty much than Perez on average. And that's before, obviously, Perez's uh, final pit stop. Um, so, yeah, there's no real claim here uh, that Perez, um, or legitimate claim, I guess you could say, that Perez deserved to be able to fight for the win. He was clearly slower, quite a bit slower than Max Verstappen. Verstappen was on a different strategy and they had to let Verstappen through um, the, the, in the times they did to allow Verstappen's strategy to work because they weren't just racing themselves. They were also racing uh, George Russell in the Mercedes and trying to build a gap to him so they could get the 1-2 finish in Barcelona, which they did. Um, and there was just, again, no reason to hold up Max Verstappen. So... I don't see how you can legitimately claim that he was, you know, screwed over, I guess you could say, with um, that Grand Prix and being able to fight for the win of that race. Then we have Baku, where after... So Sergio Perez got into lead of the Grand Prix on the first lap, and then it was Leclerc's second, Max third. Then the virtual safety car came up because Carlos Sainz broke down. Leclerc pitted, and then it was a Red Bull 1-2. And then uh, Verstappen caught Perez quite quickly overtook him but whilst he was overtaking Perez was told on the radio not to hold him up or not to race Max and that did cause a bit of controversy uh, at the time now let me again explain 
why uh, what Red Bull did was absolutely fine. Because if you look at, and this average lap time, this is not just the first stint, this is actually from when the virtual safety car period finished, right after Charles Leclerc pitted, up until Max's, I think, first pit stop, or Sergio's first pit stop, I think it was. Uh, I think it might have been Sergio's first pit stop. Perez was lapping almost a second per lap slower. And if you actually go look at the lap times your, uh, yourself, his lap times from when the virtual safety car period finished until um, his final flying lap before he pitted, he his pace dropped off by about three seconds or more per lap. His tyres had absolutely gone. That is why they told uh, Perez not to fight uh, Verstappen, because there was absolutely no reason to do so. And it was, again, going to hold the team up when, at the time, they were in what they thought was going to be quite a close race with Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari to win. The Azerbaijan Grand Prix, obviously, in the end, uh, Leclerc had an engine failure, and they ended up Red Bull with a comfortable 1-2 finish. So, in the end, it didn't matter. But, again, I just want to debunk um, that claim, I guess. And the final thing, obviously, I wanted to go through was the uh, the race strategies and has Perez's strategies been um, in a race been compromised by you know, having to um, help Max in some way, shape or form. Um, going back and looking at all the races this season, I could not find any strategies of Perez that were affected or um, that were done in a way to help Max purely rather than trying to help Sergio um, in the in the um, in the Grand Prix, um, or in in a Grand Prix in 2022. Obviously, in 2021, in a couple of occasions, we did have Sergio's strategy being affected to help Max. Obviously, in the final race in Abu Dhabi, where Perez was clearly on dead soft tires, they kept him out uh, to hold up Lewis Hamilton. We haven't seen any of that type of stuff in 2022. So there's nothing bad going on there. So. On reflection, um, there's nothing that really Sergio Perez can complain about. Max Verstappen simply is obviously the much better driver, the clear number one of Red Bull, and there is nothing wrong with Red Bull completely building their team around this man, Max Verstappen, who could be, uh, go on to be, one of the greatest drivers of all time and is set to dominate Formula 1 as I've said in a previous video. So, yeah, nothing wrong going on here. And to be honest, with Sergio Perez, he knows what he signed um, in terms of his contract when he joined the Red Bull team. He knew he was going to be um, in this position where even if the car was suiting him maybe a bit more um, at times than Verstappen, he was still going to have a very hard job to beat Verstappen um, even in two or three consecutive races, which I don't think we've seen at all from Perez compared to Verstappen uh, since he joined Red Bull. He always knew that he was going to have this difficulty. And looking at all the evidence of the um, of the accusations, I just don't think there is real evidence that Sergio Perez has been unfairly treated. He's been treated absolutely fine, and it's been great for Red Bull and will be uh, continuing to be great for the Red Bull team. But guys, let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think Sergio Perez has been unfairly treated by Red Bull? Do you disagree or agree with what I'm having to say? And until my next video, guys, it has been me, Chazza HD. Goodbye.